How's everybody doing? It's Monday, it's the first. If you didn't catch, I'm doing a new series uh, where I'm just coming up with some random businesses or random industries that we're gonna talk about coming up with a new campaign for the holiday season. Everybody knows that during this time of year, everybody's scrambling not only to spend a lot of money and to get the perfect gift, but to, to capture some business uh, from all the consumers that are off from school, off of work, on vacation, uh, traveling. Uh, spending time with family, eating a lot of food, right? Um, there's so many things that are going on during the season. And so uh, basically using a random word generator to come up with a random business or industry that I can talk about developing a campaign just here straight live. And I don't have any notes. I do have some basic ideation here that I've talked about already. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just have my notebook here in case I think of something while I'm, while I'm talking and I can make sure that I remember it. Um, but the main thing that you know, when it comes to really figuring something out like this is uh, what type of business is it? Who's running the business? Who's the ideal customer? And what are people doing right now? What's What are the ideal customers doing right now? So I want to try to break this down. Editing services. I don't know if I said it already. I did it in my intro video. Editing services, um, Not that could mean anything, right? It could it mean script writing. It could mean ad, ad copy. It could mean just... Book, writing a book, right? But for, for this purpose, we're going to focus on just a basic general uh, a copywriter, a copy editor, um, like notaries <laughs> that probably offers notary services or other type of copywriting services um, uh, for anybody, right? So say I'm a copywriter. Uh, I can service businesses, corporations that maybe need to write ad copy, Um I can service the average Joe that is possibly, uh, you know, writing a letter or writing some sort of research paper or, um, you know, something along those lines. Or I can uh, service websites. I could service <coughs> social media posts. I could service um, resume writing, stuff like that. I could work for a college. There's just so many things that you could do. So for this example, I want to I wanna keep it super broad to show how impactful that you could be even if you're not niched down. Uh, with a really good strategy and I'm gonna I'm gonna be a copywriter copy editor um, that does it all right I'm gonna I'm not gonna niche myself down I'm not gonna just work with students um, so what what type of campaign can I focus on right now that doesn't tie me down that allows me to have a good reach um, but it's also really effective and so what I like to try to do is is when it comes to a pre focus is uh, understand the return of this type of business. Uh, you know, when it comes to copy uh, editing, is that what I have written down here? Editing services, sorry. So I'm trying to just keep it uh, fluent here to make sure that we stay on topic. Um, but for the most part, they're going to charge hourly. You know, you can't really, if you have a broad service, you're not going to really be able to say, hey, I do X amount of words, uh, even. Um, well, maybe I guess you could do that. So maybe X amount of words, or maybe you're working hourly. Either way, you're not going to make a lot of money reading somebody's stuff, right? I don't think you have to be super skilled. You could be a good writer. You can have some notoriety. Um, but you're not going to be making $1,000 a weekend, a job, uh, you know, in one day, probably, unless you have a really big team, a, a really high-paying client that's, um, you know, the the meticula meticulality, if that's a word, the meticulousness of the detail of the content itself is really important, then maybe you'll get them jobs. But for the most part, you're gonna probably be making 20, 30 bucks an hour tops, you know, probably 10 cents, one cent a word. You know, that's probably gonna be the way that you measure it. So my point is I'm rambling here, but what we wanna do is we wanna iron out these things and I wanna to talk to you about these things, about my thought process so that you can understand just how much detail goes into a pre-focus. So once again, we're focusing on a basic general editing service that does a wide range of things for a wide range of uh, consumers or customers or clients for a little amount of money. So in order for this person to make a lot of money, they're going to have to have a lot of clients, right? And they're also not going to want to do a video that's probably $30,000, dollars $50,000. They're probably not going to be doing a video on Super Bowl Sunday or even on NFL Sunday or even maybe college football Saturday where a lot of people are watching TV or during the holidays, 
when there's a big movie on or a parade or I don't know, what, what do people watch these days? Music awards or something. Um, they're not going to be able to do that. So the budget's going to be small. And I say this because you want to keep the video simple. If you want to tie down and nail down a specific client for a uh, editing service, you can and you could go after them really hard. But for the most part, since you're not garnering a lot of return, we want to try to have a wide net approach. Um, I like to kind of visualize this as a net. Like say you're an old school fisherman. Um, you know, you're, you're putting anchors on each of those corners of that net and you're casting it out in the ocean and you're trying to come down on as many fish as you can. You're not going to a certain hole, a certain cove, a certain uh, coral reef, right? To catch something and using a specific strategy, you're going to try to get them all. And as an editing service, it's kind of be something that you really want to do. Um, because off the cuff here, I can't really think of anything that somebody would want to pay somebody to edit for them an awful lot of money. Like I said, unless it's an advertisement or maybe a movie script or something, but but uh, we're not focusing on those right now. <clears throat> so what I would do, um, just sitting here talking through it, talking through it, and editing services, I'm going to probably try to have as many touch points as I can in one commercial. And in most cases, you have a 30-second commercial, tops one minute. If you're on social media, you can have two and a half minutes, but in most cases, that's too long. People are scrolling, especially during the holidays. You're not offering a deal. You're not offering something specific. You're not offering an announcement or an event that they might click on and save. You're offering something that they potentially might need. Um, so when I try to think of the main clients for this type of service, um, during the holidays, I'm probably going to think number one client right now is going to be businesses, corporations that are looking to edit their copy edit an advertisement. Um, and when you think of an, ad an advertisement or a blog even, um, there's so many touch points that go, that go along with that. So say for example, you have one ad, one video um, with one purpose. You also have the description. You also have the title. You also have your social media posts. You also have the transcription. You also have um, you know, different places, the platforms and channels that you're pushing it on. So, so the touch points are a lot higher um, and you want to make sure every single piece of that advertisement or that campaign is on point, uh, that it's a, a cohesive, that, um, that there aren't any errors and that, you know, you're, you're obviously using a good writer that's able to tap into a, tar a target audience. So right now that's going to be probably the primary highest paying potential client for uh, uh, editing service. Um, is business and that's gonna be really competitive so it's gonna be hard for them to get them so once again you can tie down an approach to go really really hard after those and compete or after that type of client and compete against all the other uh, options that they have out there or you can include them in your strategy and uh, and obviously try to grab on um, so people doing ads running ads running a lot of different deals and stuff they need help writing their copy, they need help editing their copy, they need help proofreading that stuff, and they need help running it by somebody else that could be included in their type of target audience that can give them feedback on, hey, how does this sound? So that's extremely, extremely valuable. Um, the second uh, client I would probably say right now are gonna be college students, um, maybe high school students, um, um, maybe uh, you know business owners or um, somebody that's writing the end of the year report, right? So an analysis paper, a research paper, um, any, any type of, um, uh, long form of content that you're turning in for work or school, I think is going to be your secondary market. Um, people that, you know, they don't want just their mom or their friend or colleague or classmate to run through somebody. They want to pay somebody professional. And sometimes parents of college students are going to be willing to do that for their students to make sure, you know, they, they graduate uh, with honors or, um, you know, are able to have these marks to help them get a job. You know, so all these different things that go along with resume writing. This is going to be another uh, target audience. Um, let's see. I have a website pulled up here. Um, probably uh, people like, I would say even um, to go along back with the businesses that would need an editing service right now, I would say probably like a vlogger too. A video blogger or a, a blogger in general that's maybe doing a bunch of recipes right um, I would say this is a, th a third our third market uh, just a content producer um, 
that's maybe doing it for a hobby, that's maybe uh, writing something for a website, it's maybe a stay-at-home mom, uh, maybe it's an influencer, right, that's just pumping out some content, maybe they need some help making sure that it sounds good. Probably not gonna pay super duper amount of money, um, but they're gonna value having somebody that's gonna be able to come in and say, hey, give you a third eye, be able to say, is this good, is this ways that could be better, are there any mistakes that I'm skipping over? Um, you know, probably charge a couple dozen dollars for that. And then maybe you have, I would say, somebody that um, is maybe writing a letter, right? Uh, maybe it's it's a soldier, somebody that's overseas. And maybe this is stupid, I don't know. I'm just trying to think outside the box. Um, that's maybe writing a holiday letter or a holiday card. Uh, and they've already spent a lot of money on photography. They've already spent a lot of money on a, the designer or approach or whatever they're going about and they want to write a good letter. Maybe they're writing the letter to all their family members, want to make sure that sounds good. Or maybe they're thinking of somebody out, uh, after the holidays, maybe a, uh, an ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe it's your dad, maybe it's your mom, maybe it's an old friend, uh, sister, you know, somebody that maybe you've lost touch with that you're really trying to write a really good heartfelt letter that um, maybe is a couple pages long or an email that you want to send out. Uh, maybe a boss sending out to their employees wishing them a Merry Christmas, right? Um, some people value being able to run those ideas off somebody and say, hey, is there any way I can make this sound good? So here we are, once again, pre-focusing the mindset of coming up with a creative campaign that is uh, that carries weight during the holiday season. <laughs> so each of these people, you know, they all have these different problems during the holiday season. They are each have a goal, right? to get more business, to have a good ad, to have a good presentation, uh, to get a good grade, uh, to uh, have something roll off the tongue really well, or to have somebody receive something really well, right? All these purposes and uh, reasons to hire editing services, professionalism, personal reasons, uh, and, uh, you know, credibility, right? Uh, competence being seen as a professional. Um, so what I would like to do, going tying all this back together, probably going super long here, is when it comes down to the commercial, we have a low budget, remember, not a high paying target audience, want to keep things simple, wide net approach. Um, I'm thinking about having a really uh, individual settings of each of these people, and I think even maybe five or six, that might be going too long, um, but since this budget isn't high, we're probably not going to be able to push this on on major TV programs, it's good to have a long form as well. So if I was running this campaign, I'd probably have a short form of two or three people, um, uh, actors, whatever you want to call them, subjects that are uh, depicting these types of buckets for editing services. And then I would have a long form video that's maybe two or three minutes long that uh, gives us a couple of different options, but it really depends on the budget, how big this, this editing service wants to go, right, for 2022. Um, and I would have that business owner, uh, that, that CMO, that uh, contracted marketer, uh, you know, sitting up late at night, probably with some stockings in the background, some Christmas lights, a candlelight, maybe a fireplace, snow falling in the window off to the side, depicting the season, right? of somebody working late at night with minimal lighting, stressed, there's tons of things going on, and they're trying to get this ad done. They're trying to get this uh, copy uh, copy written, uh, or they're trying to finish this campaign um, that's gonna launch here in December, that's gonna target all their favorite customers. And we're gonna, we're gonna paint that picture of a person that's really, really struggling to get something done by themselves. We're going to paint a picture of a similar person, same night probably, uh, potentially in a different country even to, to show the range of the editing service, right? We don't want to have too much uh, things that are the same. Uh, you know, a lot of people do this with race <laughs> or men and women. I think that's cheesy to, to showcase differentiation, but I think the easiest way to go about it is, is, is climate or culture. Um, race is just a, a small piece of that. So uh, culture, it could be a different country. Uh, climate, it could be different sitting out, out outside the window. It could be middle of the day. Uh, we could have mountains in the background with sunshine, uh, palm trees, maybe somebody sitting at the beach. That could be a good online school right now. Somebody sitting online um, trying to write their, finish their paper. Okay, stay focused. 
Um, so we're going to change that scene. Again, they're alone. They're struggling. They don't have the help. Actually, they may have somebody that's helping them, but maybe they're we're showing different facial, facial expressions. They're just kind of like, mm, this person doesn't get it or this person doesn't help me or I'm not getting ex that, that extra sprinkle of what I need from a professional that could help me make this paper or this report, uh, you know, on point. And for the long form content, you know, we'll have, like I said, one or two or maybe three versions of this. Is it is it uh, an employee that's doing an end of the month report? Is it a, a blogger? Uh, is it a student, right? All these different types of people in different settings that are really struggling to get something done, to get something sound, uh, sounding great. And then we'll go to that last person that's maybe sitting up in their study or bedroom or at, at their office or maybe just on their bed, right? And they got their pen and they're trying to pin this letter and they keep, keep scratching it out. It's like, oh, stupid, you know? And we're showing that frustration and we're showing that, that, that desire of that person to really write something heartfelt to somebody else. And we're able to paint that picture in the same way, um, maybe with something in the background that shows a relationship that's broken or shows a, them holding a picture of somebody that they miss, that maybe the picture is torn. Like that person uh, was angry with that, that other person at some point, ripped that picture up, they taped it back together. So there's all these nuances that we could showcase up this setting for somebody that would need editing services. And we would run the camera, I would probably use a 50 mil to, to fuzz out uh, the background or blur out the background and really focus on the facial expressions and the pen to the page or the computer screen. And really that this person is really, really, really trying to focus in on something and get something done and write it in a really, really good way. And we have five or six different people that are encompassing this, uh, this fight, this battle with their mind to overcome writer's block or their limitations as, as a creative person, right? That they need the help, they need a, that extra boost. And that's where we come to, you know, the hero part of, of the video. We have all these characters that are struggling to write, that are struggling to get something done, to cross it off during the holidays with all this extra stuff going on. And they stumble across uh, a copy editing or an editing service that's affordable that's really good, right? That that has experience, um, that's able to um, not only pinpoint what the person is wanting to say, but be, be, able, be able to articulate it in a better way. And I think what would even be really good for this type of strategy, since this is all off the cuff, everybody remember that like, this isn't something that I have written down. Um, I think it would be good to have maybe uh, the editing service, the person that's doing it, narrating. So, you know, uh, what the person is doing, you know, they're scurrying <laughs> through the house, uh, not a, you know, whatever else you might have, it's like some really cute or creative uh, holiday poems or nursery rhymes or something that has to do with the season, like I was just trying to remember right now, um, that you can kind of have that person shown as the expert. And at the end, uh, you know, talk about all these different types of people. Um, you know, I understand what it's like to do this. I understand what it's like to do that. I understand how perception matters. I understand um, that those extra couple words matter and really round out the scene and say, and, and I do this, I do this for you. And it's something that I want to help you with, especially during the holidays. Um, put the paper to the pen. There's all these different types of uh, um catchphrases or slogans that you could just come up with for the season to, to not sound cheesy, but sound effective, sound professional, sound like you know what you're doing, but don't talk a lot, right? Keeping it simple, focusing on these people that have some, some real pain points and they don't have anybody around them that can help them finish uh, what they really want to accomplish and what they really have to accomplish in some cases. And, um, uh, they need somebody to talk to them in an understanding way, but in, in a way that's going to uh, build uh, credibility, build competence, uh, and probably want to come off as some sort of a wordsmith, right? Like this is kind of one of the, my strengths is to be able to write things, to be able to uh, pull things out of somebody else's mind and regurgitate them down on the page in a better way. Um, find out a creative way or an effective way to communicate that. With an, in a, with an authoritative presence. You know, if you have 
the camera following all these people around in the, in the settings that they're at. You kind of have somebody sitting on their chair, like I have a chair right over here, and maybe have a circle in the chair focusing on their facial expressions, what they're doing, what they're reading, um, and then the, all the stuff around them, right? And then switching over to another person, kind of having that camera going back the other way, and then switching back over to another person. And then now, boom, we got a bright light with a woman in, or a man uh, editing service in, in a bright room, in a clean room with a piece of paper or a computer that's, that's clean cut, that's um, conceptualizing what's going on, right? It's I am this, I am that, I wanna help you, and I understand. And um, during the holidays, there are so many other things that you can uh, focus on, allow me to help you. Have some snow fall down, some glitter fall down, uh, cross off the page, have your end screen, right? Have some sort of transition, cool transition with the logo, really clean, really white, really festive, and really intentful. Um, it's, you can't really go wrong with something like this. If somebody's trying to write write something for something else and they see a video like this, it's gonna resonate with them because you have, they're struggling, they're unable to do it. Um, and you have multiple touch points that uh, allow you to reach a broad, broad, net of pe broad range of people. And once again, if you didn't catch this from the beginning, um, since we're dealing with a client or a, an industry, if this is my client, I'm saying, and their return uh, the their service doesn't garner a lot of revenue uh, per client. You know, it's not somebody like me who I could build a forty thousand dollar website or uh, give somebody uh, you know x amount of consultations for five thousand dollars. We're talking about a copyright copywriting service, editing service that's a one and done. That you get a piece of paper, you fix it. You're getting paid per hour or you're getting paid per word. Um, so the main goal is to understand the audience understand the main value propositions that you provide, right? That you supply, um, understand what people are doing during this time of year, understand how you can communicate those emotions, those feelings, those behaviors, those uh, frustrations, those PowerPoints, and then uh, find a way um, that you can communicate your competence um, in a message or form or a, a slogan that resonates with all these people. Um, so uh, that's really, you know, what I'm doing this month. You know, we have uh, 24 more campaigns to go here that we'll randomly go through. Um, I kind of have some written down here. I don't have them in order yet, but we're going to have stuff stuff from a boat retailer to a golf shop, um, dessert shop, pizza shop, life co coach, art lessons, pest control, coffee bar, uh, soap making, errand service. I mean, some of these random business industries that I got were... were pretty, pretty, uh, random. So, um, you know, again, this shows, uh, the depth that I go to, to discover, um, my clients to dis to uncover my clients and then to, to discover their opportunity, right? Make sure that we're, we're going down every path, every channel before we get started on anything. Make sure you're not calling me with just an idea. You want me to execute it, making sure that we're really running down uh, all the possible possibilities and, you know, one thing I like to say, too, is, is making sure that, hey, your message, your campaign is a stream. It's a river. It's going straight down. And people may be able to see it from the banks, right? They may be able to see some people riding on it, may be able to smell it, um, just as far as painting a picture here. Um, but what we want to do at PreFocus is you don't want to just have that river that comes down the center and hope people come across it or have to cross over it. We want to be able to create tributaries. We want to be able to have campaigns that branch out past the shoreline, right? That people talk about, that uh, soak in in different ways, that create different streams uh, into new opportunities or avenues uh, that reach different types of people in different places. And in order to really do that, you have to be able to uh, break down a campaign in all its elements and discuss and understand your tar target audience. Um, if, if you started a business or uh, you're running a business right now and you, you aren't able to come up with three or four or five descriptive adjectives that, uh, you know, that define and describe your business and then three to five ideal people, specific people that um, really value your business. If you're really, really unable to do those things then you're, you're at such a disadvantage. Um, the more you understand you and the value that you provide and the more you understand your, your ideal customer audience, uh, the better that you're not only, not only able to perform in your marketing, right? But the more uh, you're able to 
a drive and sustain loyalty um, because you're, you're speaking in a consistent way. Um, you know where you're heading. You know where, you, where you've been. You understand um, uh, where the opportunity lies and uh, you're not wasting a lot of time uh, chasing other things that don't make sense. Uh, you're able to keep your head down, focus on your business, strengthen your culture, strengthen your product or service, and make sure that uh, you know you're not uh, leaving any leaky buckets. And um, and then obviously you're able to measure that stuff. You're able to see how things transpire. You're able to uh, understand um, what results even look like and how to see them. Uh, you're able to understand. Uh, you know, what type of returns you're able to get off the things that you do. And um, you're not guessing. I think that's the main thing with the pre-focus. Everything's set out even for a year or two to come. Um, everything's organized and you're able to access and execute pretty much anything that you need at any given time because your message never wavers. So without going into too much detail there, uh, this is the f uh, first episode here, December 1st, uh, 25 days of Christmas. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're, even if you're not an editing service or a copywriter, uh, or, you know, you don't proofread stuff for a living, you know, use this stuff because I think the framework is the same um, and that you can apply any of these uh, 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 benefits or I guess strategies or stepping stones or concepts <coughs> concepts to, to any business that you run. And that's why I don't pigeonhole myself. That's why I don't niche myself down. The pre-focus is available to anybody that really wants to sit down and talk about stuff and understand who they're trying to target, why, and who values their product, and you know really what their competition is doing, and how to different, differentiate yourself. Because at the end of the day, uh, we don't want you to just be an option to people. We don't want you to just come across as a service. We want to come. We want you to come across as the best of the best. Um, and that takes effort on your end. If you're not working on that type of stuff to be the best of the best, I can't really help you. So think about all this stuff. Think about the ways you can continue to improve. And as always, be purposeful with everything you do. And always remember to pre-focus.